Hey man, it's me, Kevin Smith. Welcome to the Grow Tent, everybody. You have found the best one channel on YouTube, man. The place where we simplify the approach for you so everyone can learn how to grow. We make it so simple, even I can understand. So I'm going to listen and learn right now. Woo! What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Grow Tent. We got a great episode for you today. Today, we're going to go over, we've been getting a bunch of viewer questions. Oh, I have something in my eye right there. I've lost my tripod. I'm pretty sure Princess GT stole it, but we've been having a bunch of viewer questions on like how to tell you've given them enough water or the plants, the water's running right through the plant whenever I'm trying to water it, which makes you think you're at runoff and you're really not. And we've been having a bunch of questions where, all right, camera problems today. Let me tell you. All right. So Join the Patreon. Remember, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, watch the full video. That all helps the channel a ton. Uh, also, Mars Hydro is the main sponsor of the channel. So, you know, we got to pay the bills. Here is a commercial for Mars Hydro right now. Appreciate it. Uh, what else? Oh, let's roll this uh, ad for Mars Hydro, and we'll be back in a minute. Woo! What's up, guys? If you're looking for any kind of new light, new tent, exhaust fans, filters, anything of the sorts, make sure you check out Mars Hydro. They have been the main sponsor of the channel since we hit 500 subscribers. And as you can see, we have a lot more than that now. Uh, if you would like an extra discount at checkout, make sure you use the code WTTGT. It doesn't matter if you do capital letters, lowercase letters, whichever. Any of them will work, but you have to use the link in the video description below and then put in the code at checkout and it will give you a nice discount at checkout. Who doesn't want an extra discount? And remember guys, no matter what size tent you have or area you have to cover, Mars Hydro makes a light that will work for you with some of the best LEDs and diodes and drivers and ballast on the market. You can pick up one of these lights to cover exactly what you need and exactly where you need it at a economical cost. Use the code below. Woo! We're back. We have our test set up that we were talking about earlier. And we're going to go over soil whenever it gets dry. So this is some soil that's been sitting out for probably two months in the bag, not in a closed environment, anything like that. So as you can see, it is super dry and dusty. See how dusty it is? So the problem you're gonna run into, if your soil gets too dried out, or the top, you guys know the top always dries out first. The problem you're gonna run into is that whenever you, we have some just Regular, this is just regular tap water, even though it's in a bottle of distilled water. It's just regular tap water. So the problem you're going to run into is whenever you try to water this, should we go left or right? I don't really care. You know, it doesn't matter either one. Whenever you try to water this, the soil, since it's so dry, it has two properties that you're going to be fighting against when you try to water it. The first is... Whenever the soil becomes really dry, the top will always be really dry because it dries out the first, uh, the fastest. Uh, you're going to be fighting two different phenomenons. The first is that when the soil is super dry, it becomes very hydrophobic, which means it actually will repel the water away from, uh, from itself. And the other is you're going to be fighting the hydrostatic tension in the water. So if we go ahead in here... And the problem you'll run into is people will water, see it come out the bottom and think they're at runoff whenever they're not. So people come in here and water. And the water, you can see it's all just puffy sitting up here on the top. I was playing with it so it, it's not, uh, you can see though, it's not soaking in. It's just sitting there and it's not going anywhere. Luckily I have paper towels here because my hands are now a mess. And then as you can see on the bottom here, the water is now just running straight through the pot. Now we only poured, so a lot of people would see that and figure, oh, hey, I've got runoff. But as you can see, we only, I mean, we barely poured any out of here at all, and the water is already running out of the bottom of the pot. So what can we do to combat this? Well, we can't do anything about the hydrostatic tension of the water, because that's just part of water's properties. It's always going to, 
at a molecular level, it's always going to bond to itself. So a little tip, you can just see the water just pooling, running straight out. Oh, I've hit, I've hit my water runoff. And what you'll see is by doing it this way, you're not ever actually achieving water runoff. So let's dump this out real quick. Luckily, we're in an unfinished basement, so just dump that out like that. So you would have seen, you would have thought, since we had runoff, this should all be saturated, right? But look, hardly any of this dirt is wet at all. It's all still dry, even though we saw runoff. So what the heck is going on? Well, since the soil was dry, whenever we poured water on it, it just fluffed up on the top and then just ran straight through it. The soil didn't actually soak it in. So what I like to do is you can get just a little cheap spray bottle just like this. You can get one of these uh, for like a dollar anywhere pretty much and you just fill it with regular tap water even if you're going to be watering whatever because we're actually going to use this to since we're it's going to be misting like that see how it comes out in a mist since we're going to be misting and we're not pouring the water in we're getting rid of both of the things that are fighting against us the first one is since we are spraying with a mist we don't have the large volume of water, so fighting the molecular bonds of the water, uh, the water tension has, it's nowhere near as great because we're atomizing, you know, we're misting the water. So we get rid of the big pools of water. I mean, you can even see on the table here, the water will pool together and it doesn't just run out and fly all over the table. Even though it's a flat surface, you would think it would run across the table, but it doesn't. The, the water molecules actually bond together and they hold themselves, so they'll hold themselves in a little puddle just like that. So, what I'll do... Oh, no. Camera. Camera air. Camera air. <laughs> this phone's too heavy for this mount. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just take this, and we'll pretend these all have, you know, plants in them. But I will actually just take it, and I'll miss the top of it pretty good. So, what we've done now is since this water is tiny it the soil can't take it and just roll it off of it and let it run right through it you can see the difference immediately on how the water reacts since we're spraying it with just small water molecules instead of pouring water in you can already see the difference you can rewind to see what that's not what the top of that looked like you can see since we're we're doing it on a smaller scale, the soil can actually accept it and leave it. So what I will, instead of just pushing it and letting it run straight through, and then you end up with a dry pot. Um, so I will leave this after I sit here and you just give it a nice coating. Uh, I will actually leave this for about 10 minutes. So let's give it a little bit of time and then we'll come right back. All right, we're back. It's been about 10-ish minutes. I don't know. I was working with the snakes, so it's pairing season. And uh, so it's been about 10-ish minutes, maybe 12. All right, so as you can see, the water has saturated into the soil way better. And what you'll see is, now we don't have plants in these. There's no roots to catch the water. So it will still go through the plant. But what you notice is where this one, it sat on the top and it was puffy and we, it just kind of sat there and then it found a path of least resistance and ran through where it just sat on top of the soil. What you'll notice now is whenever we pour this water on here, you'll see it take it and then go and then it will suck it all down nice and evenly at the same time. So we're going to pour that on there and then see, look, it immediately it pulls it straight through. It doesn't sit on top of the soil anymore because we've gotten rid of the hydrophobic uh, tendencies of the soil since they're dried out. Now we're going to take this water, we're going to dump it over here for a second so we don't ruin this. But now, whenever we look at this, we can pull it back and look at the difference at how much wetter this soil is compared to whenever we did the other one. Remember, the other one was just barely wet on the top, and then we pulled it and it was it was all dry underneath. 
Whereas this, you can see how much better this watering technique works by how much wetter the soil is just after, since we sprayed it on the top. Now my hands are dirty. But just since we sprayed it on the top, just that one little trick will improve how much better you're watering, especially if you have a plant in here and you're not just doing it with random soil like we're doing it here. All right, let me clean my hands off, then we're gonna go to the next point. All right, the next just real quick thing I wanna talk about is overwatering and what I mean whenever I say that. So I could take and I could dump three gallons of water through this right here and I don't consider that overwatering is not a volume issue. It's something, it's a chronic issue. It's something you do too often. So instead of adding this, well, we'll say this, I'll add this entire gallon uh, one time a week. That's not overwatering. But what would be considered overwatering, if I got my little deli cup here, and once every few days, because you would need to water every few, once every few days if this was all you're watering, I go in there and I take and I give it just a small cup of water and then I do it and then it, the soil of course dries out because you only gave it this much water so then you had to go in and water again and then a few days you got to go in and water again that is textbook definition of over watering instead just come in here with your you're actually watering get a good saturation on the soil now of course it's going to run right through it because it's already that soil is already soaking wet from what we were doing before but you go in there you get a good soaked soil and then you leave it alone until the plant is ready to be watered again in a way longer time period because you watered with all that water saturate all the soil instead of just using this little cup to water a little bit every few days once again, water overwatering is not a volume issue. I could pour 10 gallons of water through there at a t in, in one day. I wouldn't want to do it because it would flush out the system. But I could pour 10 gallons of water through there on Monday, and it's not that's not overwatering. But on the other hand, if I go in there with this every day in water, a little bit of water, a little bit of water, that's overwatering. Not it's not the volume. The other thing I like to do is you see how this plant is sitting in runoff water right now. One of the other things you can do if your water just keeps running right through your plant, you can actually just let it sit in this water. Now, you wouldn't have a runoff tray this big. This is obviously a 10 gallon or for a 10 gallon pot, but we just had it bigger so we could see today. I would let it sit in its own little one gallon drip tray, which is about that size. I would let it sit in that one gallon drip tray for an hour or two and the plant will actually bottom drink through these holes that are on the bottom of the plant uh, pot. So it will actually take and it will soak that water up or as they like to call it butt chugging <laughs> the water up through the bottom of the plant and it will actually pull the water up through here and that's another way you can get it to if your soil is so dry that you just can't get it to accept any moisture you can actually just pour it in from the bottom and it will pull itself up just through there. All right, I hope that kind of clears some stuff up for some people because I've been getting a bunch of questions on, you know, on overwatering and because they were like, well, I'm watering every few days, but and I'm only using, you know, small amounts of water before I'm getting runoff. And I just kind of wanted to clear up confusion. That's not true runoff that you were getting. And I just wanted to, you know, show you guys what we were really looking for. All right, I hope that clears some stuff up. Hope everybody has a fantastic day. I'll see you next time. GT, out.